What's up, YouTube? So as if yesterday's news around stablecoins and what's happening with Terra and Luna aren't enough, it seems like we're seeing more trouble brewing for all stablecoins that are out there. In fact, Politico called this a crypto reckoning for stablecoins. What are they talking about? Why does it matter to you? And why have we seen eight billion dollars in the past three to four days liquidate from the world's number one stablecoin. We're going to cover this and a whole bunch more coming right up. Hey friends, Wes Spencer back with you again. Thank you so much for joining. Would you hit like and subscribe as we go down this journey together? We're getting so close to 100,000 subs. It's crazy to me. We're going to be there this year only if you'll hit the like button and please hit that subscribe button as we go down this journey. All right, so let's talk about this. I wanted to share this straight away before we get into anything. Take a look at this article from Politico. You see Chair Gensler right here. This did not happen this week, right? But this article came out talking about a crypto reckoning looms in Washington as investors lose billions. Now, what they're talking about here is the billions of dollars and loss that we saw from Terra and Luna. And if you didn't watch yesterday's video, you've got to cue that up next. I talk about what happened with Terra and Luna, how stable coins are of different makes and kinds, especially these algorithmically driven stable coins, which show promise, but sometimes really bad things can theoretically happen. And in the case of Terra and Luna, it did. Billions of dollars liquidated in the snap of a finger. However, that's not the end of the story. There's a lot more to discuss around all of this, and one of the big items to discuss is specifically what's happened inside of the world of Tether. Now, if you don't know about Tether, it is the number one stable coin that's out there, and it saw some pretty significant seismic changes that occurred in its own user base and market cap just this week, and almost all of it was a knee-jerk reaction to what happened to Stellar and Luna. We saw eight billion dollars liquidate from Tether this week in the past four days alone. Now, what caused that? What made that happen? And was it a whole bunch of investors or just a few? Well, let's take a look at some dynamics here so you can kind of see what I'm seeing here and you can draw some of your own conclusions. So we're looking here at Tether. This is from CoinMarketCap. Right now, I just have the past seven days rolled up, so we can kind of see what's been happening in the past week. And notice that we see some pretty amazing things. I'm looking at market cap right now. For stable coins, this is often a more helpful view than, than price because the whole idea of a stable coin is to stay stable to the market, right? Stable and pegged to a, another asset, usually the US dollar. And so we saw it at eight, about $83 billion before the Terra and Luna news events happened. And then as soon as it happens, like a little, you know, like a little um, tremors of an earthquake happened. Happen, right, some some back and forth trading out of fear, and then before you know it, a huge drop, a huge reintroduction back up, and then notice this. This is a pretty interesting thing. You see these these cliffs, nosedive cliff number one, nosedive cliff number two, number three smaller, number four, and number five. So five huge nosedives in market cap reduction. Now, if we were seeing a whole bunch of individual sellers that were just individually trading and it's going down out of market fears, you wouldn't see these huge cliffs like this. You typically see it slowly go down as you see in a lot of market trading for other cryptos. You look especially what Bitcoin's been doing the past uh, month or so, or even really the better part of this whole bull mar or bear market, you, you don't see like like these huge cataclysmic just drops off cliffs. So traditionally what you see here is a whole bunch of like institutional selling where a whole bunch of assets that were hold, held in Tether were completely dropped. And what's interesting too is when you look at price, notice it lost its peg. So for the longest time, it was trading at a dollar right around it, right? Just, just right close to it, which is where it wants to be. And then after that news dropped, you saw a huge drop all the way down to about 95 cents. Now in the world of a stable coin, dropping to 95 cents is a massive, like a 5% drop off its, off its peg is huge. But when you, when you sort of mix that in with what's happened with Luna and, and Terra, especially the Terra stable coin that we covered in yesterday's video, 95 cents isn't so bad considering, you know, where it went down to like 10, 11 cents. So, but that's still a huge, in, in the world of, of stable coins, it's a huge drop off. I mean, look at this one year. 
you see it really trades right around a dollar. Here's a dollar right here. It's been up and down, a little bit down, but coming back up, really handling that stable, that peg pretty well. And then there's a huge drop. That huge drop came from market fears over what happened with Terra. When you see a, a stable coin like Terra, where tens of billions of dollars, closer to 50 billion, completely nosedive down to one, all of a sudden you're going to see that have ramifications what we call ripple effects through the rest of the market. In fact, if we take a look right here, like just year to date, take a look at this. This is, we've seen Tether as the number one stable coin, which is not backed by an algorithm, by the way, continue to grow, continue to grow, continue to grow, all the normal trading ups and downs that you'd expect. And then again, right as you saw the entire news around Terra and Luna, this just falls off a cliff. So I'm just giving you different viewpoints so you can really understand just how significant of a drop this was. And so there's a lot of questions that come in over this, like what caused such big drops? And it's my belief that you're not seeing just a bunch of individuals, people like you and me that maybe have a thousand dollars in Tether being like, oh, I'm a little scared of that. You're probably seeing larger institutional holders of Tether that have millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars completely exit their positions out of fear of what's going to happen. So is there anything impending that's about to happen? As far as I'm aware, not yet. We've seen regulators and especially legislators be really slow. They're definitely signaling that regulation has come. I'm, I've been covering this on the channel for quite some time, but we haven't seen it happen quite yet because really legislators move slow. I used to work in banking. I understand how they work. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of deliberation, a lot of debate before you see legislation passed. Same with regulators, those that hold the force of law. It takes them some time for the ball to get moving. So I'm not aware of anything that's coming out like tomorrow or next week, but there's deep fear in the market. And here's where that deep fear is coming from. That deep fear is coming from people, especially large institutions that looked the other way and saw what happened with Terra, and they're like, this can't happen to us. We can't wake up one day and see all of a sudden that stable coins are no longer viable. And all of a sudden our positions where we've been holding billions of dollars in a stable coin is liquidated and gone to nothing. That would send our company to the ground. There's fear in that. Now I'm not saying it's reasoned fear, but I think it's logical to understand the market is going to knee jerk. You're going to see that ripple effect with other stable coins that we've seen in the market. A couple quotes I want to give you inside that Politico quote. Look at this. They in interviewed Anthony Scaramucci. He was, I think, on Donald Trump's like legal advisory team or something like that at some point. But it's a huge he's a huge crypto guy. And he said this about the, the whole Terra and Luna background. He said crypto haters, anti crypto regulatory enthusiasts will use this as a marching signal. And he said, Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren are going to use this as totems to block, curtail, slow down the industry. No question they're going to do that. I, by the way, I love that whole like totems. I, I think it's true. Like they're going to hold that as their, their flag, right? Just like I said yesterday, the whole cr arms crossed. I told you so. I told you so. Take a look at this quote as well, also from Politico and was in a statement that uh, came across from the article. This is from Senate Banking Chair Sherrod Brown. Chair Brown said this, Terra USD's inability is yet another reason we must closely regulate stable coins and other cryptocurrencies. These products, which are far more complex than they let on to consumers, put Americans' hard-earned money at risk and have the power to impact the rest of the economy. Now, I am sure if you were to question Chairman Brown, and say to him, can you explain to me the difference between Tether and Terra? Do you even know that there's more than one stablecoin? Can you explain the difference between an asset-backed stablecoin and an algorithmic one? They might be able to answer that piece, but the rest of it, they're not going to have any answer to. They're definitely seeing stablecoins as a threat to the U.S. economy. And unfortunately, a lot of institutions and a lot of people like you and me, just retail buyers, like stable coins because it's an easy intermediary between the fiat market and the crypto market. Maybe if I think crypto is going to take a nosedive, I put some earnings into a stable coin to hold. Maybe if I think it's going to grow, I take some money that was in stable coin and I move it into something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Cosmos or whatever it may be. This is the challenge. When they see that intermediary, and they see that as a threat to the U.S. economy because it is backed to a dollar that they have no control over, they're going to worry. They're going to want to sink their teeth into it. And so they're going to use what just happened with Terra and Luna as a way to say, I told you so. We're coming after this. That's the truth. 
The challenge is that currently the market cap, let me go back and look at this. It was about 83 billion for Tether. Now it's sitting closer to about $75 billion. You're not going to see regulators just jump in overnight and just kill out Tether. You're not gonna see that happen. I promise you, that will not happen. But what you may see is regulators come out and start to say in X amount of time, we are going to issue new guidance that makes stable coins that are not backed by and approved by the federal government illegal. And they might say, oh, Tether is welcome. We're not making Tether illegal. We're just saying that in order for them to be legal, they have to check our boxes. But guess what? You're never going to be able to check our boxes. You can't hold up to our standards. That's probably what they'll see. You'll have, that's what we'll see happen. It's made legally illegal, if that makes sense, or maybe illegally legal. I don't know how it works, but it's going to be probably something very similar to that. And so you're seeing large institutional investors that don't want to get caught in the whirlwind there. And so they're saying, you know, these holdings we have in stablecoin, we're exiting them. And that's probably exactly what caused that huge cliff. Let me go back and show this to you. These huge cliffs of exiting, right? Where you go from a market cap of 80 shaving off going down to 79, shaving off, going down to 78, shaving off, going down to 76, and so on and so forth. That's probably what causes these, not slow because of a bunch of trading, but immediately dropping. That's what I think we're, we're seeing happen here. Now, is there room for fear on this? Does this make sense? Is it reasonable that we would see something like this occur? And should we be worried about it? Well, I think it's reasonable that it's occurring, right? We, we, anyone that knows this world of crypto knows a seismic event like what we just saw happen with Tether is going to have ramifications across the board for all stable coins. We know that, right? We know regulators are gonna seize into all things stable coin because it's looked at as, as evil. But I think a little bit more than this. I don't think we should be in a rush to get out of stable coins. I think we just need to understand that there's going to be major changes happening in the industry in the next year. And we need to be ready for those things. And I think if you have all of your holdings in stable coin, if you're not willing for that to all theoretically be liquidated, you shouldn't probably be holding it in that space. Remember, not your keys, not your crypto is the rule number one. And rule number two of crypto is never invest more than you're willing to lose. Now, I don't think that's likely that you're gonna see it all get liquidated like we saw what happened with Terra. But I do think we can see, as I mentioned, regulation coming, causing changes and forcing you out of your holdings in one particular crypto or next. But I will say this, the government knows with Terra holding currently, go back and look at this, about $75 billion market cap, they are not going to walk into that and just ax it. They, they know that that would have mass systemic effects, not just to crypto, but to the to their own their own financial ecosystem. They won't, they won't kill $75 billion overnight. So we don't have to worry about that. But those fears are a real thing, causing risk-averse institutional holder, holders to get rid of their bag of tether. So in closing, what do I think about this? I think it's, we, we should have expected this to come. I think you should be ready for it. I think you should be paying attention to the news and you should be thinking through what your exit plan is. Are you going to move that stable coin over to US dollar? You need to be able to do that before something you know happens to where it's impossible to move it. And then you also need to be prepared for what could happen, especially to Tether. And we know that Tether has had some negative news events, right? We know that like they've especially uh, had a lot of critiques because a lot of their holdings that back their stable coin have not just been in like cash reserves. It's been in things like other kinds of uh, holdings and even notes and some kinds of unsecured like debts. And that can be scary stuff if things tumble quickly with Tether. I just don't see that happening anytime soon and I hope it never happens, but the regulatory pressure is causing changes in the industry. So I wanna know what you think. Are you concerned about this? Are you exiting any position you have in stablecoin? Are you abandoning high yield stablecoin farming? Or are you going to kind of push through the risk? And what do you see happening, especially here stateside in the US around what regulators are gonna do? Leave me your comments down below. I would be very curious to know what you think and curious to know what your thoughts and reactions to all of this are. And while you're doing it, super quick, just go whack that like button, hit subscribe, super easy, takes you like half a second, and it does a lot for this channel. All right, my friends, thank you so very much.